All right, I'm gonna do a really quick, and I do mean quick, um, band pass type characterization of um, the mini circuits ZX60 P103 LN Plus. It's a um, 50 to 3 gigahertz amplifier. It's pretty small, can you tell? I tend to think of it more as a preamp, but it's, they call them amplifiers. So we'll leave it at that. Um, with uh, maximum input at um, um, I guess plus 21 dBm um, when you reach the um, IP3 or IP it's um, the compression uh, type output um, <coughs> I guess uh, from the way I understand that's defined as and that's new to me that um, you reach a point where, let's say, a 1 dB increase does not produce a 1 dB output, and uh, at that point, compression starts to take place. Um, so those are definitions for IP and IP3. One is a, I think it's an intercept point, third order. Um, <coughs> and anyway, one thing I was cautioned about with this preamp before I show you the setup and a little bit of testing on the bandwidth was that um, you had to be careful because the output of this <coughs> at um, IP3, which is probably the maximum input, um, the output is like 40 dBm. That's a fairly hot signal. So when you're using this preamp, you might want to just kind of keep that in mind as in regards to what you're attaching it to so you don't cause any damage to any of your equipment uh, or receivers or whatever it is you're using it. Th with this uh, analyzer that I have, the uh, Rigel 815 it only has a uh, maximum input of plus 20 dBm so that's a good case right there where you'd have to be careful because you could damage the <coughs> spectrum analyzer okay um, <coughs> so last uh, video I did um, it showed uh, showed it showed you all um, weak signal amplification which is really nice. I, I enjoyed the fact that it could take a very weak signal and amplify it still. Very important for us as ham radio operators to be able to uh, amplify weak signals because for us that's especially in the uh, higher frequencies um, <coughs> where that can become an issue. Or if you're doing moon bounce, um, aka um, EME, Earth Moon Earth. Um, anyway, so what I've got is I've taken the uh, analyzer and I've got the cable on it with a barrel and <clears throat> I've got a couple of um, uh, attenuators here, 6 dB attenuators um, just to help with impedance matching because this doesn't have port impedance correction on it, port correction as I was told before when I was doing uh, attenuator testing so I've just tried to apply that same principle with testing other units like a preamp just to be you know sure that getting as accurate a reading as I can in that regard. So up on the screen here, it's um, basically already normalized it, set it up, normalized it, and I've set up um, a table, marker table, and the points that the markers are at are the same points that are on their table, their data sheet, <coughs> so that we can look at that and compare kind of thing. So that being said, with that all set up, <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and attach the preamp here. It's a very small preamp. Can you imagine this one uh, at the low end has like a plus 24 dB gain. Imagine we've got a couple of these in series putting it on the front end of a receiver or something. You'd have to protect it, but um, if you want to really do some weak signal stuff, wow, right? I mean, if I was doing the one and uh, with a test earlier with all the attenuators and it was taking that weak signal, can you imagine what this would do if you were using it as a preamp and you could use it in conjunction with some pin diodes, whatever, or relays and switch it in and out of the circuit um, at the antenna um, for moon bounce? Wow, nice, right? Of course, if you get another signal close by, it hits that. <laughs> uh, it could be a problematic unless you have some diodes protecting the input to the receiver, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so here we go. We'll fire that thing up and see what we get here. <coughs> Alright, so at those points, as you can see, it's not flat, which I mentioned in my last video, 
but the specifications, the first time I saw that, I'm like, oh my gosh, <clears throat> because I was used to that other amplifier being so flat. This particular one is not, and um, the noise figure is nice. I mean, all the way up to, well, let's see. When you get to 100 megahertz, it's 0.6 dB. 400 megahertz, 0.4, and it stays between 4. Point, well, okay, it stays between 0.6, goes down to 0.4, and then 0.5, and then 0.6 again. And that's between 100 megahertz and 2.4 gigahertz, which is a pretty good noise figure for, uh, for that. And I didn't verify that with the analyzer. Well, I tried to verify it with the analyzer, and I couldn't. Um, I mean, I'm sure I could, but um, just through normal, how I normally run the analyzer, I couldn't even see it. And on my um, SDR receiver, looking at the noise floor, I could not see it either. So, I mean, if I can't see it on the noise, on the noise floor, <coughs> that works for me. And with the other amplifier, the uh, ZX, oh, I take it back, it's not a ZX, um, ZFL1000LN with the almost, it's 2.9 dB noise figure. I could see that on the analyzer and on the SDR, on the noise floor, so. It's nice that you can't see it with this one. The only difference is this one, as you can see, doesn't have as much gain way up on the high end. But in my case, it's not such a bad thing because I'm working down uh, with the weather uh, satellite image reception at 137 megahertz. So not as much of an issue. And um, the gain... Um, uh, well, up to about 1296 is... Uh, I say 1296 is 1200, but you know, ham radio thing, right? Uh, 14 dB, so a couple of these cascaded and filtered for 1296. You still get almost 30 dB of gain uh, from them, and uh, I'm sure some good weak signal amplification. <coughs> Again, you'd have to switch them out. They're pretty good, they're moderately priced too. Most of the preamps have been between, I believe, I don't have that information in front of me, but I believe they're between like 49 and 69 dollars. And um, I don't know if you heard that, but my cat was putting in his two cents as well. <laughs> Could be a catastrophe. I don't know. Maybe he's just catatonic. Um, anyway, so those four points on the screen. The first one is uh, at 50 megahertz is showing 25.09 uh, dB. And on this, I've got 25.29 dB. So that's pretty close. And then my next point is... 400 megahertz and at 400 they show 21.49 and I've got 21.67 again more than close enough and the next one <coughs> is at 1 gigahertz oh it is at 1 gigahertz I don't know why I did that one um, let me see let me move that one so this is um, marker number 3 I must have moved that accidentally my cat is about to get booted in the butt, I think. So let's move that uh, down to... Not down to... Well... Yeah, let's move it down to 800 megahertz. That's where the other point is on this one. <laughs> I know you can hear that, you guys. Okay, that's pretty close. 799. At 799, it's measuring 17.27 and they've got oh wow look at that 17.27 that's pretty funny and then the last point I have <coughs> is 1.2 gigahertz I don't have a 1.5 on the chart I don't have a 1.6 so I did uh, 1.2 it was just close to 1296 right anyway 14.22 on their data and we've got 13.93 so as you can see, those are really close. I like that. Again, um, you know, these um, compression points, IP3 and IP, you do have to watch that. Um, <coughs> they show IP3 and DBM um, at, say, 1296, so that's a frequency that a lot of uh, the EME people would be interested in. Um, it's 40 DBM. And 40 DBM. That's hot. I mean, that, that as far as this kind of stuff is concerned. Um, 40 dBm, I just find it on my turn. Wow, they're saying plus 40 dBm is um, 10 watts. That's a lot of power right there. Definitely wouldn't want that going. I mean, even at plus 20 something, plus 20 anything, really, 
is um, in the hundreds of milliwatts. And I don't know of a lot of receivers that would even handle that very well, to be honest. I know a lot of receivers probably have front end protection and um, AG, you, know, you got AGC and they have diodes across there. It's the old, that's the way we used to do in the old days. And you guys remember that out there where you would um, take and put some geranium diodes across the receiver contacts, you know, to protect it against um, large signals going into the receiver? Nod your head if you remember that. <laughs> um, anyway, <clears throat> and there's, um, let's see, I guess that's really all. I could do the noise floor. I don't have a lot of time left on this video, though. I'll save it for another video. I'll see if I can't actually measure that half a dB noise floor at that uh, at mid band, you know, where they say it's from um, 6.6 .6 dB, I believe, to 0.6 dB on the other end, on the high end. What did I say? That was 100 megahertz to. Where is that? To 2.4 gig. I can't go that high, so I can go up to. 1.5 though, so it should be, well if I do 400 to 1.5, it should go between 0.4 and 0.5 dB noise floor, or noise figure uh, increase on the noise floor. Hope to see if we can try to measure that, maybe average it out using video averaging, <coughs> and see if that's actually measurable for us, so it'd be interesting. And you know what too, this does have the feature to have a reference trace, that can make it more interesting too, use a reference trace, and then compare the two and see if you can get that uh, that measurement to show up on there. Be a good a good one to try. And a good one for using the analyzer. Uh, and just you know one more way. Okay, I guess that's about it. Uh, so thanks for watching. Again, um, you know, so far the stuff with May circuits has been uh, great, a lot of fun. So and they've all worked well and uh, like I said, really moderately priced. So good stuff folks. Good people too, by the way. Very nice people. But probably the best I've worked with so far with all this. Catch you all on the next video.